afternoon everybody and welcome to our Earth Spirit Network workshop. My name's Laura and um, I'll be running it today with uh, Tony and Janet and Val who are also members of the Earth Spirit Network. So um, you'll notice that you're all muted at the moment, that's deliberate, we're not being rude, it's just that um, there tends to be a bit of background noise if people have their microphones on. Um, so to give everyone the best chance of hearing the speakers, we'll keep everybody on mute whilst the, um, the initial presentations are going on. Um, so I'll just give you a quick overview of what we're going to be doing this afternoon and then I shall hand over to Tony. So um, Tony will introduce us to the Earth Spirit Network and also to the concept of the Circle of Three. And then we'll just talk briefly about how we might um, maintain a good connection with nature whilst we're self-isolating. Uh, then we will introduce the Wheel of the Year um, and we'll have a reading from the season that we're in at the moment, which is Ostara. And then we'll split you into breakout groups um, where you can explore uh, connecting with a couple of other people and then um, we will uh, bring you back and get some feedback on that and we'll finish with a meditation. Now we're hoping to get it finished in about an hour so if anyone's wanting to go to the um, Alistair McIntosh um, seminar after this which starts at two, two o'clock I think you should be able to make that and so the extra half an hour is really just for feedback and questions at the end so we should be it um, finished in around about an hour. Okay, so I will hand over to Tony. Hello everyone. Um, I've got my little speech ready and I'm using an auto cue so we'll see who finishes first. <clears throat> but uh, welcome to this virtual workshop of the Unitarian Earth Spirit Networks. Thank you to Laura for organising it and for hosting it. <clears throat> Now, a brief introduction to the Earth Spirit Network. On our website, it says the Earth Spirit Network is for those individuals who find divinity in nature. We seek harmony with the presence of this divinity, either as individuals or as small groups. I facilitate a group in Bolton, and there are other small groups around the country, but there are many individuals. Divinity is what you think it is, whether it's the presence of God or those emotional feelings of connection with beauty, peace, love and relationship, or a universal spirit of love, or an ancient wisdom. And nature is driven by forces of energy that ebb and flow as growth, decay, rest and renewal in the cycle of life. And all this is happening in a seeming chaotic way because there are multitudes of different life cycles. The world itself is subject to it and has a life cycle of millions of years. The universe around it, an even greater one. We humans have a life cycle mostly under a hundred years. There are trees and turtles that live for centuries and moths and butterflies that live only for a few days. And absolutely nothing in all this universe is actually perfect. Because if anything is perfect, it cannot change. The universe, the world, ourselves, the tree, the turtle and the moth are all imperfect. But this pulsating energy of life is driving them to seek to become perfect. So we grow and change and mutate in an endless quest for perfection. And onto this cacophony of energy, cycles <clears throat> the circulating moon, pulling the oceans into tides, influencing the growth of root and leaf and affecting our emotional moods. So amongst all this, how do we connect with the divinity within nature? And the answer we say, by working with what we all have in common in our many and various life cycles, the natural solar year. By being aware of how the year changes under the influence of the sun, we can synchronise ourselves with it, harmonise ourselves with the changing seasons. 
recognize within ourselves those same cycles of growth, decay, rest and renewal. And as well as our physical existence, there are the same cycles in experiences, in emotions, in relationships, in spirituality and much more. We celebrate the cycle of the year, awaken a spiritual response in ourselves and so connect to that divinity which is in nature. And we celebrate the year by marking four important stages of the sun, the winter solstice, the summer solstice, the vernal equinox and the autumn equinox. And there's a festival between each one of those stages. So we celebrate eight in all, the wheel of the year. And each one relates in some way to nature's energy of growth, decay, rest and renewal. And in our workshops, we're going to explore these festivals using our Wheel of the Year cards. And in groups of three, we can discuss how we respond to these festivals and how we can build a connection, connection between ourselves in our group <coughs> and maybe between family and friends at home. And to give you an idea <coughs> how it works, um, I have a, Unitarians have a file and I wrote a, a fantasy piece for it. A circle of three a fantasy. I went to the Earth Spirit workshop at the annual meetings out of curiosity more than anything else. We were asked to sit in groups of three. I ended up with two people I only knew by sight because I had seen them around and at mealtimes. We introduced ourselves, typical GA stuff this, one was, one was from Wales and a family man who was quite new to Unitarianism. The other was visiting from America. I am from the north of England. It was handy having the Wheel of the Year cards that were handed out as we began to talk about ourselves and our family traditions, mostly Christians to be honest. But we did know about May Day and Halloween and knew some of ancient sites and monuments. We said we would try to celebrate these festivals ourselves, <clears throat> though we weren't sure how. We could see if there were any local groups we could attach to, and we could maybe try to include something in our congregations. The one from Wales said he was going to take photographs through the year and make himself a set of cards from them. America was going to have a small shrine at home dedicated to the family and decorate it through the year on the theme of the festivals. I was going to visit local stone circles and write up about them. We were all enthused. We exchanged email addresses and set ourselves up as a WhatsApp group and we will send greetings to each other at every festival and share how we marked it. So that is what we achieved in our hour together and I'm sure it will work out and we do have our Unitarianism in common, so there will be plenty to share about that too. I'm going to make a start and ask two friends to come with me on my Stone Circle trips. So that's the plan. Okay, Laura. Thank you, Tony. Um, so for this uh, section, we just I just want to explore a little bit about how we might um, maintain our connection with nature whilst we're in. Um, isolation especially if we've been asked to be in strict self-isolation and not go outdoors at all we we're of course a part of nature but it can be difficult to remember that when we're having to spend a large part of our lives in indoor man-made spaces so if so I'll just speak briefly about the ideas that we've had about this and then if you've got anything um, to add, if you can put it in the chat box, then I can, um, I'll pick those up and, and I can read them out to people. Um, and we hope that you'll be able to explore this a little bit in, more in the breakout groups as well. So if you are able to get outside at all, you can um, make yourself a, a nature shrine or um or an altar with maybe some foliage and some natural objects so so mine's got um a representation for each of the elements stone for earth feather for air 
a candle for fire and a shell for water. And of course, having, um, having lots of house plants and greenery in, in the house is very helpful. But studies have shown that um, actually imagining yourself within a forest or a woodland or somewhere like that or immersing yourself in nature by watching a video or listening to nature sounds is almost as beneficial for calming the mind as actually being there. So there are lots of good videos of nature sights and sounds on YouTube, nature documentaries on, on iPlayer and things like that. Um, there are also webcams that you can watch, RSPB birds' nests. You can do um, meditations on the elements and on seasonal energies or visualisations, imagining yourself, say, in a woodland clearing or a meadow. So these are just some of the things that, that, that I've thought of as a, as a way of helping us to maintain that awareness that we are part of nature. So if anybody has got any other ideas, please do type them into the chat. Oh, I invite my co-hosts to think of anything else that they might want to, uh, to add to that as well. Okay, well, I think you've, you've covered um, some that I was going to mention. I'd just, I'd just like to tell you about the, uh, if you don't know about it, the BBC webcam, uh, which has got some beautiful live streaming of elephants at the moment and it's a 24-hour live camera and you can see there you are watching elephants wallowing in a pool at around the clock it's just wonderful and there are many many more there's also laura i'll put the, the reference in the, the chat for people mm -hmm. um oh and yeah, I thought as well about, uh, I, re I remember being really moved at our flower communion services. Um, those of you who've been to those, um, and a, a good part of those for me is always the, the flower meditation. And I thought that that was something that we could really do inside on our own, just taking some time to really, really focus on one single flower and it doesn't have to be a, a camellia or anything like that a dandelion or something like that could be, be quite okay Just taking time to look at each petal and use all our senses with um color texture as well just to have a look but the thing is to focus just on one simple flower it's absolutely lovely uh, there, so I'll, I think I'll put my references on the on the chat, Laura, for people to follow up if they want to. Thank you. Thank you. And we've also had some some really great suggestions as well on the chat. Um, painting from photographs uh, from Kitty and uh, a diary of things that you can see on a daily walk from Anne. Yeah. And Sarah says planting seeds and being at home enough to care for them properly for once. Yeah, <laughs> really appreciating that. And um, and open the window and simply listen. Yes, yeah. There's lots of bird song out there at the moment, isn't there? That we can't perhaps normally hear. And Joe, uh, cooking with wild like nettles and cleavers. Sorry, yeah. Tony. I was looking at Indra on our screen. Hi, Indra. And uh, behind him, he's got loads of. Uh, photographs and paintings and they're really good for meditating to, to actually study what you've got in there to, to, to take time and look at the detail. It's going to take you a while, you've got loads. <laughs> <laughs> what else have we had? Oh, noticing the colours of butterflies. RSPV webcams of nesting birds, goats in Clondidno, yes, <laughs> and just paying attention, looking under stones to see hidden life. Oh, Sarah says she found a newt the other day, wow. We have to live in the moment, cooking with well food. Butterflies that I've never seen in my garden are in my garden. Yes, that's as Lindsay, yeah. That's, that's happened to, to me recently as well. My husband saw a brimstone yesterday, which I don't think we've ever seen in Manchester before. So fantastic, yeah. 
Oh. And Susan says, more primroses in my lane than I've ever seen before, perhaps because of the mm -hmm. less traffic here. Yeah. Right. And Inja says, walking in the garden and figuring out how to improve it, weeding and trimming. Yeah, yes. Yeah, mine's got into quite a state at the moment, so I'm enjoying um, gradually getting it a little bit, a little bit more how, how I'd like it, yeah. That's good. Okay, shall we start to talk about the Wheel of the Year now? Well, want to start on, on, on our cards, Tony? If you look on the, uh, the door behind me, I set out as a set of cards. Um, of course, there are eight of them all together. And um, we devised these initially for our, for our Bolton group. And uh, Ian, one of the members, did all the drawings for them. And uh, when I sell a set, I, I give him a quid commission. So if you want to keep him rich, please help. <laughs> but um, the first one is always um, Yule. That's the, um, the winter solstice of Yule. And um, shall I read what's on the back of it? Yeah. The winter solstice is a celebration of the shortest day. When the sun seems to be standing still over the Tropic of Capricorn before returning to push its light and warmth back towards the north. It was a time for lighting fires to encourage the sun to begin that return journey. Yule is a celebration of light and the evergreens. The Norse goddess Frigga was said to have worn, of, said to weave the fates of a person's life into a ring. And from that, we have the tradition of the wreath placed on the door of the house. Holly and ivy were also brought into the house. So too was a young tree as a place for the forest sprite to stay. The exchange of gifts came from the Roman feast of Saturnalia. Not only were gifts exchanged, so too were places. The master waited on the servant. The slave became the master. People dressed up as the opposite sex. This lives on in the tradition of the pantomime. A fairy tale story where the principal boy is played by a girl and the female villain by a man. So that's our winter one. We always have, when we meet, um, we always have a good time at our Yule meeting because we talk about Christmas's past. And we talk about um, the memories that we've had of Christmas. Sometimes people bring in uh, a present or something. You say, well, this was given to me so many years ago and, uh, and I still treasure it and I, I treasure the person. So that's our Yule Festival. And we count that as the first of the year, the winter solstice. Okay, so second on the wheel of the year is uh, Imolk. I'm not sure if you can see this properly which is a it's a snowdrop and it's the midpoint between the winter solstice and the vernal equinox a time of awakening marking the transition from winter to spring the ground is becoming warmer some seeds can be put in the soil the ewes start to lactate in preparation for the birth of their lambs and birds begin searching for a mate and start the task of building their nests Imok is also known as candle mass in the Christian tradition, where there was a procession of people wearing a candle headdress. It's part of a pageant of purification that honours the goddess Bridget, and it's believed she travelled over Ireland on Candlemas Eve. People left a garment on the doorstep for her to bless as she passed. In the course of the year, the maiden Bridget changes to mother and then crone. The period between the 1st of February and the 30th of April is said to bring the gift of insight and inspiration. It's a time of beginnings and of essential truthfulness. It's a good time to make resolutions and plans and prepare for the unfolding year. 
So that's the period that we're in now, isn't it, between the 1st of February and the 30th of April. We've got a few days left then to get these insights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Janet, do you want to do Ostara for us? Where's yeah. Janet? It's Ostara. 21st of March, that's the vernal equinox. The theme is balance. There is balance between day and night, light and darkness. It is the first day of spring when the plans and activities of Imok become a reality. Ostara is a German goddess of fertility associated with the moon. It is full at this time of year when the outline of her sacred hair can be seen within it. Often Ostara was depicted as the body of a woman with the head and shoulders of a hare. The hare is seen as a mystical creature reborn every morning and is a sign of immortality. The egg too is seen as a symbol of new life emerging from existing life. The seed is the future generation that has come from the present and the past. Ostara is celebrated with decorated eggs, dancing and leaping, the fires of which were sown earlier in the year. That's Ostara. Have you got one, Val? Val, have you got your cards with you? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Right, we'll, we'll, go back, we'll go back to Tony then. <laughs> Real time. Beltane is the first of May. <coughs> Beltane means bright fire and marks the beginning of summer. It is a time to celebrate the fertility of the earth with music, dance, and colour. It was the day for matchmaking between boy and girl and dancing around the multicoloured maypole. A time too to salute the fairies and acknowledge the gods and the goddesses. At this time of year, they have the best interests of everyone at heart. The period between the 1st of May and the 31st of July is said to bring the, the gift of increased confidence it is a time of growth and greater sociability as the weather grows warmer. It is a good time to celebrate the vitality of summer and the joys of youth. Oh, Janet? Yes, yeah, I'll do another one. I'll do another one, yeah. Lithia, um, is that the right one? Yeah, Lithia, the 21st of June, the summer solstice. This is the longest day in the northern hemisphere. This is the time to find an open space and greet the sun as it rises in the east and to celebrate its light and warmth. It is a time to thank the earth for its abundance. Traditionally, we gather on a high point to witness the rising of the sun. That's the summer solstice. So the next one is Lammas or Lunasa, which is on the 1st of August. This is the time of high summer. It's a festival to celebrate the first harvest and the gathering the new grain. The first sheaf of corn was hung over the fireplace in the house and will be ploughed into the ground in the spring and the last sheaf could be kept for making corn dollies. Early country dwellers believed that the first loaf baked would have magical properties. The festival of Lu, God of Light, coincides, coincides with Lama, and the period between the 1st of August and the 31st of October is said to bring the gift of maturity. It's a time of physical harvest and spiritual garnering. It's the time for celebrating the harvest of projects the seeds of which were sown earlier in the year. Now we come to Mabon, 21st of September. 
the autumn equinox sun reaches a point of balance. The corn is gathered in the middle harvest of fruit. Sorry, the, the corn is gathered in, the middle harvest of fruit hangs ready for picking. The time of daylight and the time of darkness rest against one another. All is fulfilled and rest approaches. The horn of plenty, cornucopia, is full. Let the ground rest. Clear away what has died and process it back to the elements and so to the earth. The wheel turns on through rest to the birth of life again. This is the time for reflecting on the year of our life. This is a time of preparation for peace and a time of rest. Look back at the equinox of spring. What did we sow and what have we reaped? What plants have borne fruit? and what have not grown. Rejoice in the positive and take what has failed to be burnt on the fire of experience. Leave the way clean, clear and ready for a new year returning. Okay. Janet, do you want to finish? Yes, the last one, yes. This is Samhain, the 31st of October. Time to gather in the nut harvest and to take stock and prepare for winter. Families would gather for a remembrance meal. A place was set for those that had died during the year. As they shared their food, they talked about the deceased person, passing around objects they had handled and celebrating the difference their lives had made to the family. It was a time to honor the dead. And as they told stories in the candlelight and the shadows danced, they might think the spirit of that person was near listening. This was the traditional time to celebrate and remember. The period from 1st of November to 31st of January brings the gifts of restoration and renewal. As the cold weather closes in, so the soul is led to more reflective depths. It is a good time to appreciate wisdom, freedom of spirit and clarity. Samhain, 31st of October. Thank you. So I'm going to attempt to put us all into breakout groups now. So we're going to actually do the circle of three or the triangle. Please, Janet going to do her reading? Oh yes, um, oh, right. uh, just before that we'll get Janet to do her reading. But, um, so in the breakout groups, um, just um, introduce yourselves, what your connections are within Unitarianism, um, how you relate to the Wheel of the Year and how you might um, maintain a connection in the future if you want to. Um, so Janet's going to do us a reading about this season, which is Ostara. Yes, this is taken from the book, The Earth's Cycle of Celebration by Glenny Kindred. The spring equinox or Ostara, the festival of awakening. Day and night are of equal length all over the world. In the Northern Hemisphere, it is celebrated as the first day of spring. From now on, the days will grow longer and warmer. Everything in nature is coming alive and the days are getting warmer. It is a time to throw off the restraints of winter, cold, interpersonal agreements. It is a time to reach out for what it is that we want for ourselves. It is not so much a celebration as an emerging and moving forwards. Seeds are germinating above the ground now. And so with us, we feel empowered to take risks, strike out on our own, get on with things, make things happen. There is an underlying excitement and joy. Thank you. Do, you, do any of my co-hosts want to say anything else about the breakout groups before I spin the magic wheel? 
we can't wait to <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> right, okay, here goes. I'm enjoying seeing friendly faces on this. <laughs> right, okay. We're off. So some of you might have a four possibly because there's not there's not a divisible by three number, so we'll see. <laughs> okay. There we go. Thank you everybody for that. Um, I just, I'll, I'll just say before we start our meditation um, that there, there's been some suggestions about meeting up on, on Zoom to celebrate the Wheel of the Year and that's something I've been um, already considering because um, we have a, an Earth Spirit Circle that we run at Jolton um, which meets for the Wheel of the Year and obviously we're not able to meet in person at the moment so I was going to um, do that online anyway so I will certainly open that up to everybody and um, Tony's um, Earth Spirit Network, it will go out to everybody who is a member of the Earth Spirit Network, the invitation. Um, so if you want, if you're not on Tony's distribution list and you want to be, if you can put your, um, if you can, um, Tony, do you want to put your email address in the chat box and then people can take a note of that and you can email Tony. He'll add you onto his distribution list. Laura, is, face, is the Facebook page another way that people could? Yes, and it, that's right. Yeah, and we've also, if you, we've got the um, Earth Spirit Network um, Facebook group as well. So if you're not a member of that, if you want to, to ask to join that. And I will certainly um, put all the details on there as well. What's the name of the group, Tony? What's the exact name of it? Can you remember? On Facebook, yeah. it's the Unitarian Earth Spirit Network. Thank you. And there's a website as well, which has several names. If you put Earth Spirit Network or Unitarian Earth Spirit, you'll get it. Okay, so I'll just mute everybody again now while we do our meditation and then I will unmute you all and, um, and we can have a chat at the end. <laughs> okay, so settle into your space wherever you are as comfortably as you can. You might want to close your eyes and bring your awareness to your breath. Not trying to change anything, just noticing the sensations of the air entering and leaving your body. Breathing in, I know that I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I am breathing out. Take a moment to scan your body from feet to head, noticing any areas of tension and just see if you can relax them a little. I am fully present in my body in this moment, at ease and at peace. 
Breathing in, I am aware of the earth element in my body. Breathing out, I see no separation. I am one with the earth. I see the earth element is the calcium in my bones, the iron in my blood, the protein in my muscles, the food in my stomach. All the solid matter in my body comes from the earth. I see the earth element entering my body in every moment. And in every moment, my body is entering the earth. There is no separation. My body is but one manifestation of the earth. I feel stable, grounded and rooted like a tree, able to withstand all the challenges life brings. Breathing in, I'm aware of the water element in my body. Breathing out, there is no separation. I am one with water. I bring my attention to the liquid elements in my body, saliva, tears, sweat, blood, urine. All these parts of my body are part of the water that supports all life. I know that without water, my tears will run dry. My blood will clot. My kidneys will shut down. The water in my body comes from the juices in the vegetables I eat, the water and tea I drink, the rivers, lakes, oceans and rain. There is no separation. I am one with water. I feel flexible, able to navigate all the concerns of the day. Breathing in, I'm aware of the fire element in me. Breathing out, there is no separation. I am one with fire. As my belly rises and falls, I feel the warmth that lives there. I see the fire element in the heat my body creates through metabolism, digesting food and burning calories. I see all beings that consume and transform energy. We are all burning and one day we will all burn out. I see my body is animated by the energy of heat, the element of fire. There is no separation. I am one with fire. I feel energized, alive, creative, able to find solutions to problems. Breathing in, I'm aware of the air element in my body. Breathing out, there is no separation. I am one with air. I feel my lungs filling with air as I breathe in. Even as my lungs empty, I am aware of air's presence in the oxygen being carried to every cell in my body. I see there is never a moment that air is not moving through me. The air I breathe is the same that all beings breathe humans, plants and animals. 
I see no separation between me and the air. We are one. I feel inspired, loving and compassionate, able to live in harmony. Breathing out, in, I am aware of the space element in my body. Breathing out, there is no separation. I am one with space. I see the space between my ribs, allowing my chest to expand and contract with each breath. I see the space between each joint, so my arms and legs can swing. And I see the space within each atom of my body. Form is emptiness, and emptiness is form. There is no separation. I am one with space. I feel at peace, anchored in the present moment. Breathing in, I'm aware of the consciousness element in my body. Breathing out, there is no separation. I am one with consciousness. I contemplate the element that manifests this body from the earth, water, fire, air and space. I see the consciousness that was present as the cells of this body organize themselves while still in my mother's womb. The consciousness that was present before I learned to call this body me, before I learned that I was separate. This is the same consciousness that makes the trees grow, the rivers flow and the stars shine. This consciousness manifests this body and at the same time, this body manifests this consciousness. There is no separation. I am one with consciousness. Breathing in, I dwell in this present moment. Breathing out, this is a wonderful moment. I am one with life. When you're ready, begin to bring your awareness back into your space slowly. Perhaps wiggle your fingers and toes or have a stretch before opening your eyes and returning to us. Okay, thank you everybody. So I've unmuted you all. So if anyone wants to share anything or has got any questions, um, please do speak. I'm sorry if you can hear screaming in the background. <laughs> No problem. Sense of life. 
Thank you, thank you Laura, um, for sorting this out for us. Um, if anyone has comments, you're more than welcome to, uh, you can either email me if you want to go further or put stuff on the Facebook site or on the website. And uh, I think we will look at this idea of um, zooming on the eight festivals um, one way or another. And uh, uh, I'll discuss that with Laura and uh, be between, between Charlton and ourselves and any other groups, we can... Uh, we can put something together i'm sure yeah that'd be good. thank you i will put the meditation up on the um facebook group as well it was wonderful yeah it was brilliant it's very good thank you okay look. can we all go home now then Yes, you are all you are all free to go home. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.